Is your church a place where people learn and grow? Churches are places where people acquire important information for eternity. So the big question is, how do people learn most effectively? What do you, as a pastor, elder, Bible class teacher, need to know about learning styles to make your communications more effective? Dr. Lisa Morton Standish, a highly effective and qualified educator, is our guest. You're watching Ministry in Motion. Lisa, how can pastors, Bible class teachers, elders, teach and communicate more effectively? Well, Anthony, that's a really interesting question. I don't know if you've ever been sitting in a Sabbath school class or a small group or a sermon, and all of a sudden your mind starts wandering. You start thinking about what am I going to have for lunch, what I was doing last week, what I might be going to do next week. That's often that the reason is because we tend to communicate in church and in small groups in a very logical way where we present information. But there's a lot more out there where we can engage learners and teach them in an exciting way. Well, it looks like you've brought a ton of things along and you've got me intrigued already and I'm <laughs> eager to learn what all this stuff is. Well, so what are, what are some more of the options? Sure. Well. There's a really interesting blogger out there and he's looked, taken all of the information we know about learning styles and he's put them into an acronym for something we can use in church and it's called lavish. And mm. I think that's a great way. Often we don't associate lavish with church, but maybe we should. Exactly. So L-A-V-I-S-H. That's right. Run us by it. Let's, let's start right at the top. All right. We'll unpack it. Okay. All right. L starts for logical. A starts for active. Uh, v starts for visual, I starts for interactive, uh, S starts for space, and H starts for heart. And I want to give you some actual examples that you can take and you can use in your communities in very exciting ways immediately. Terrific. Okay, so we're basically looking at uh, worship services and maybe Sabbath school is what we're focusing on. Um, so let's start with... Logic? Is that where we're going to start? It is. Okay. And Anthony, you know, this is what we do very well in church. So we're very good at having information and presenting it. So how can we do that a little bit better? Then we'll get into the more interactive ones. Right. So as we think, we often present information in a very lecture style format. I've got information, I'm going to give it to you. So, and it's often done in, in a long format. You know, we've got a point, we come at it from different angles, we might put another point in. But when you think about the famous speeches across time, the Gettysburg Address, three minutes long. Yeah. Sermon on the Mount, I can read it in 12 minutes. Yeah. Uh, even we'll fight them on the beaches. Again, 12 minutes. I have a dream speech. That's the longest one in my set of examples. 17 minutes. Martin Luther King gave that amazing speech where he pulled in so much information. Yet in church, we're often dragging that out for a very long time and losing people in the process. TED style talks are a great example. Why okay. not have a good point? come at it from a variety of angles, present it, you've held people, they're engaged, they're remembering what so you've said. So just to clarify, what is a TED style talk? So TED style talks, um, people that are experts in a particular field will get up, present information, it's online, any topic you can ever imagine has been presented in a TED style. 15 to 20 minutes long, present your information and um, people have some points to take away and remember. Right. So, okay. And on that point, one of my uh, colleagues does a really great thing which will really appeal to your logical learners and that is at the end of every uh, sermon that she hits or a small group that she's in, she'll actually post a summary on Facebook. So not only is she taking the information and then she's processing it, she's actually reflected on it and then helping other people to maybe take that nugget away. Right. So that's another thing that we can encourage um, our small group participators or our church members to do. So providing a summary and about how long would, would a summary be? A 
paragraph. You know, wow. you can actually condense that thought if it's done well into a paragraph. Mm. So, and another one that works really well uh, is that to actually have some sort of social media site that's for your small group or for your church where you can have an ongoing discussion during the week. Your logical learners, they want to process that information more than just a one hit. They want to take it across the week. So why not provide more information for them where they can respond to it or some sort of critical question question. And then what I love about this idea is that then you take the best two or three of thoughts people have had and you post them somewhere up in church nice. so other people can be blessed by them. And again, it encourages people to do it more often as like, oh, there's my thought up there for the day. <laughs> Terrific. So. Okay. So that's the logic. Um, the next in the, the lavish uh, acronym yes. is the A. Unpack that for us. Okay, so active. So there's a lot of people that are very active learners. They need to be doing, they need to be touching, um, they need to be to, to have a hands-on approach. So I've brought a few examples for those active learners. And this is a really simple one. You might have little boxes, or however you want to present them, and it's got things inside that people can actually engage with during a sermon or a presentation. Um, and so simple as paper, um, a little chalkboard, some, some crayons, uh, some Play-Doh, something that they can actually, as they're listening, they can process the information through doing something. So they might draw a picture, they might do a word web, um, they might create uh, an image or a figure or a symbol that represents what they're hearing. And you can just have those under people's chairs and they can pull them out if they want to. So your active okay. learners are going to love this. Okay, so let me, let me just ask, can, yes. if I could just play the other side for a minute. Sure. Can, can that be distracting to some people? It could be for some people, but for those people that really engage through having something hands-on to do, it's right. going to draw them into the sermon. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people have done that over the years where they'll have a sermon outline that people can jot down. That's a very simple form mm -hmm. that's easy to implement. This is something, again, simple to package, but it's going to be a great interactive tool. Now, the one that particularly caught me was the little chalkboard. Yes. T <laughs> t t tell me how you'd actually use that. Ah, the little chalkboard. So yeah. I would just have that in my lap. It's very unobtrusive mm -hmm. and you can have the chalk. And again, Again, it's that idea of um, how can you... Oh, you've got all different colours I've there. got all different colours, so for those people that are very visual as well. Yeah. So you can draw something that symbolises what's happening in the service. Right. Okay. You can, and then you can display them. You can yeah. have a little display area and, and people can engage with it okay. uh, as well. So right. you, could, um, you could draw a picture, you could draw something this reminds me of. Um, anything to, to have people listening and engaging as opposed to wandering. And yeah, so making that available under, under the seats where people can access it and, um, yeah, they're engaging with the sermon mm -hmm. in a different way, different ways to remember the, the key points. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another one is um, a mystery bag. So you can have a little mystery bag and I've put a few things on it, all sorts of different, you don't have to use all these ideas in combination, but one we use in education is an advanced organiser. Very low risk questions. So right. they're yes and no, but you can put your key points in and people have already reflected on what are going to be those key points. So for an example, I mean, I've got some examples for the story of Peter. Mm -hmm. So Peter and faith. So is it important to face our fears? Yes or no? So low risk question. Um, uh, is risk taking character building? Again, low risk, yes or no? Then, so they answer these questions, then they're looking for the answers as they're listening to what you're presenting in Sabbath school or what you're presenting in a small group or what your, the sermon is. Okay. Inside, you can also have This is the mystery bag that mystery we're going to open bag. Yes. <laughs> I have a boat. So, um, so your boat, can, and as simple as a bit of origami, mm -hmm. um, my boat is my symbol of something that's going to happen in the sermon. So this is a sermon or, or a lesson study on Peter and his walk of faith to Jesus, right? right. Or it could okay. be anything. Yeah. How can I attach this symbol to what I'm learning about in the program that you're presenting? You know, just while you're talking, I'm thinking, wow, the, the, they're going to be sitting there. The, they're really participating because they're anticipating Mm -hmm. what's, what's coming? When, when are we going to hear about the boat? Yes, exactly. Oh, why is there a boat in there? Yeah, um, yeah. And then on the back, you can have reflection questions. So afterwards, then it's just a guide to help people to, again, draw them back to 
what are we trying to get across? What are those main points? Uh, and they can reflect on what they've learned. So rather than the one shot, I'm sitting, I'm listening, I'm able to interact with the information and the ideas. Right. So mystery bag is another one. Okay. And my final little example, and I have uh, just a ton of these. These are just mm -hmm. a few I've brought to share. It's actually a wall of faith. So imagine you start building a wall in your in your you know your church or your small group area, and people can take a little um, box and they can jot on there how has this presentation or this Sabbath school lesson built my faith, and they can write their faith building on their box, and we build a wall where as a community we've built our faith or whatever your theme or topic might be. Mm. Um, again, it's a hands-on activity that people can use to engage them in the teaching uh, process. Wow, wow. That's fantastic, Lisa. Thanks so much. After the break, we'll discuss how to communicate and teach people visually and interactively. Stay right there. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is learning and growing in your church. And our special guest is Dr. Lisa Standish Morton. Now, Lisa, in this lavish, we're up to V for visual. Yes. All right. So this is all about what we see. And we all have a bit of visual learning. We love as people to see things. So when PowerPoint first came out, I think every pastor learned how to do it and had a PowerPoint presentation. And now we've kind of moved away from that. But I would encourage people to go back to it. For your visual learners, having that picture or text or whatever it is up while you're presenting is very engaging. And so for your visual learners, they're going to love that. It's going to keep them focused on what you're teaching and the points you're getting across. So that's my first point. But then so, I actually, as well as just, yes. so as well as just hearing, when you're seeing it, there's a, a better retention. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. When we, the more senses we use in any teaching experience, the more we're going to learn it. And in fact, Fact, when we learn it the most is when we teach it ourselves. Okay. okay. <laughs> so if we're using our five senses, but then mm -hmm. the ultimate learning experience is to have to teach the material on your own. Right. But the more senses that we can use, the more it's going to re people are going to retain the information. So PowerPoints are great. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show was object lessons. Now, when I first started teaching many moons ago, um, we used to have to find material and we'd have to photocopy it and then we'd have to put it in boxes. Now there is every imaginable idea out there on the internet. So it's not even you have to search very far to get some really engaging activities for the exact topic that you want to talk about. So we can't do it on set, but I have put the, the materials for an object lesson that I've done very successfully with children. Adults love it as well. Right. So basically we put water around the plate, we, uh, we have a, a coin um, over at the side and we have a candle. And when we put the cup over the candle, it draws the water inside. And it's an example showing, it's a little experiment if you like. Right, yeah. It's an example of showing how God's love or light draws sin away and, and, and helps us to manage that, um, that relationship with Him. Wow. So, and I have a really great story about object lessons. Yes, yeah. We started a little church. We had a school that was 75% um, non-regular church attenders. And so we started a little very uh, understated church where we did TED style sermons and we had a lot of interactive activities and we encouraged our school families to come along to church. And Great. that was a fabulous opportunity. Well, one day, there was one family at church. So our presenter came, we had presenters come from all over. He came and he could have felt kind of discouraged. Like here I am, I've got one family. Mind you, they do have six children. So there was an audience. That's a full house. That's a full house. <laughs> so he presented and one of uh, the sermon illustrations he had was an object lesson. So he may have thought, may have come and thought, look, I presented this to eight people. I put all this thought into it. But that object lesson, then those students who happened to be in my class at the time, their twins, came to school and they presented that object lesson to all the 29 children that were in my class who then went home and told their parents about wow. the object lesson that they'd learnt about in church. So the multiplying effect. Such is the effectiveness, Anthony, yeah. of, of that visual 
object lesson where it engages not only children, but as well it was a blessing to the families. And you know, when they see that, they're never going to forget it. That's it. That's, yeah. They've experienced it. You know, they know it. Mm. It's it's there. And it yeah. was so it was so interesting. They even wanted it was done with milk and vinegar and a, and a few other uh, materials. They wanted the exact same milk that he'd used oh, and really? the exact same brand. <laughs> so there was a bit of a search on the parents' part to make sure they had the exact right things. Um, okay. But object lessons are, are fabulous. And then just bringing any object. Um, I was in a, a, a Sabbath school lesson, and the the presenter held up. Uh, actually a cricket ball and then had a whole uh, talk about that cricket ball but you're focused on and you're trying to think all the time like what is the significance of that as he held it up but one thing that's used effectively in presentations to have a ring toss so just one that you might have you know had for young children you can get it from the second hand store and you can actually throw the rings on as you're talking about maybe character building you know so this is the, the stick that comes the out of the ground and you the throw ground. these like horseshoes or something like horseshoes that horseshoes would be another yeah. way you could do it so as simple as something you can find around your house in your box of children's toys or grandchildren's toys or whatever it might be those can all be used to help those visual learners and really everybody to engage them in the thought and the process. Yeah, so, yeah. so bring something with you. You know, <laughs> a, a theme that I'm hearing right through this is, is the need to be creative mm. and, and unlimited mm -hmm. in, in when we're teaching. So this, this is powerful, Lisa, thank you. So mm. this is the visuals. All right. Okay, mm -hmm. what have we got next? Interactive. This okay. is some of my favorites. So okay. I've got one activity that I'm gonna get you to do with me. Oh, well, now you got me nervous. <laughs> Um, so interactive, this is people who love to participate. Okay. So anything you want to do, they're the ones with their first hand up okay. to want to be the... <laughs> so this one is one that we use in school and it's a, it's a really great way. Again, low risk question to get people engaged in, especially if you want participation. As we know, we've all presented before where we've been in a small group, we're teaching a lesson, a concept, and everybody sits there and looks at you. Mm -hmm. No one participates. You're just hoping for that one participator yeah. to give you something. But this is a way to engage your learners. So everybody gets one of these pieces okay. of papers. I call it the paper ball activity. And there's a question on there. Should we act without thinking? If so, when? So simple question. We both respond, Anthony. So okay, do you want me to write something? You don't need to write something. Okay. We, can just, we can simulate the activity. Yeah. Then we crumple it up. You want me to crumple it up? Okay. Yes. Then we stand up. Everyone stands up in your group. Right. You turn your backs to each other and you throw the paper ball over your back. Okay. Over. So you've got a nice big group. Yeah. Then everyone goes and picks up somebody else's right. paper ball, unravels it, and shares the answer that, the, uh, that one of their fellow participants has written. Oh, okay. So those people that are shy uh, or reluctant to speak up, this is a great way to introduce participation right. into your group. Okay. So they, they're happy to, they might be shy sharing their own thoughts, but they're happy to share something somebody else has written. Okay. So, so, so a great interactive participatory way and, for people to engage. And everyone's speaking, everyone's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And again, another way to introduce, if you, if you have a group where you have a lot of participators and maybe some that feel like, oh, well, everybody's participating, I'd like to, but I don't feel comfortable in this group. Mm -hmm. One way to start, which really opens people um, to feel comfortable speaking, is to actually start again with one of those low risk questions. Let's go around the circle Tell us something that happened during the week, something that inspired you, something interesting, something you're concerned about. We used to do this in our small group um, in a church we were attending before we moved back to the Washington metro area. And the group kept growing and growing. And those reluctant speakers or those reluctant participators all of a sudden started sharing thoughts because they had opened up in that initial, it doesn't have to be long, just a few pieces, but again, building community so people feel comfortable participating. Wow. Is the idea of interactive it. learning interactive and people are remembering. Uh, thanks, Lisa. When we come back, we'll explore with Lisa Morton Standish the importance of space in learning and how the heart can be a place of learning too. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is growing and learning in your church. 
And our special guest is Dr. Lisa Morton Standish. Now, I interrupted you. We're going to come to space and heart, yes. but there was more to interactive. And yes. let's just quickly cover that. Well, I could go on for hours on interactive, <laughs> okay, Anthony. This is but your this thing, is the last it? one. I love this. Um, this is one that, that works really well for a lot of different topics, but I think would work great in church. It's called a share square. So again, getting people to participate. So I'll pose a question and say, was Peter a man of faith in his early ministry? Everyone writes the answer to that question. Then they pass the paper to their left. So right. I get a paper that someone has written on from my right, and I answer the next question. Um, what is a Monday morning quarterback? How does that relate to our morning's discussion? Okay. And I write my answer. So a, sp a sporting question or something like that that's unrelated to Peter? No, it is related to Peter. Sorry. It's the morning's discussion. So it's what we're talking about, Peter. Oh. How does being basically, you know, if, okay. you, if you knew what was happening beforehand, how would that have changed your thoughts about Peter's response to, you know, maybe his denial of Jesus or whatever, whatever gotcha. you're covering in that lesson. Yeah. So we pass that to the person on the left. Right. I get the one from the right. So in the end, you have four different responses from four different people when I get my final piece of paper. So again, it's that idea of, can I share, you know, what does the person, you know, the paper you have, what did they say about how important was, um, was the how important it is to face our fears. Right. And again, it's similar to the paper ball, right. but it lasts for a bit longer. So okay. if you have time and you can explore more questions in okay. that space of time. Okay. So we often do it in school as a writing activity. So we've got a lot of different thoughts. And then from those thoughts, we create a written piece, which is again, if it was something you wanted to do in your- Ter Terrific. So that's yes. a, another interactive example. Another interactive example. Take us on to space now. So a lot of people need space for reflection. You know, a lot of us hear information, we can't process it right away. We need time for processing and reflection. So we need to create space for people to be able to do that. One idea I know a lot of churches use, and that is at the end of a service or at the end of a small group or a program, they actually say, we have somebody here who's going to be in this space. Would you like to come in and share and pray with them? So a prayer space, wherever that might be, where it's individual prayer space or a collective prayer space where someone will pray with you. That's very important to those folks that really need time to share and reflect. So but a you, prayer you know, space. Just reflecting on that, yes. Lisa, the, the church that we're very fortunate to be able to attend, that there is some momentary pauses mm -hmm. in the service. You know, the, the worship service isn't designed for TV. Right. You know, where there are... It's, it's designed for participation. Mm -hmm. And there are pauses in there where we can just take a few moments just, just to meditate. It's, it doesn't go on for, for minutes at a time, but just significant and meaningful pauses, which, which I've found to be really quite a nice time Mm -hmm. to experience. But if we can make that more intentional, let yeah. people know this pause is for you to take time to reflect or reflect prayerfully or whatever it might be. It almost gives people permission to say, yes, okay, now I have that reflection time. Um, and it's very, very important, especially in today's society where everything's such rush and bustle, that we have time to really hear what God might be saying. I had, was very fortunate to be able to do a project in one of my graduate school classes where we actually had to choose a world religions class. We had to choose a religion that we had never been a member of and we had to go and study that religion. And my husband and I went to a Quaker service and it was, I'd never experienced anything like that where it's just quiet for an entire hour and we all reflected. And then we shared our, the light that we'd been given in that time of that mm. hour long. And that's a very hard thing to do, mm. is to actually sit and reflect for that length of time. When is the last time you had a whole hour with nothing in your hands, nothing to do? No phone, no, no internet, phone, no book. Nothing. The Bible? People didn't have Bibles. It was a time for prayerful reflection to to see what the message God had for you. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Mm. Um, and I've often, I often think back to that time. So that's another thing, maybe not an hour long, but yeah. again, as you said, what are those moments where we can create for the people that need that space for reflection? Um, another one that, that I think is really great is to actually take a Bible text and then again, intentionally give people things to reflect on. So you might say, reflect on what God is saying to us in this text. So we read the text three times. What's God saying to us? 
give people time to reflect on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Then maybe ask them, read the text again. What's the overarching message in that text? So again, that time for pause, for process, for reflection. Um, and then you might say, listen for a word or a phrase that you hear. And what does that mean to you? and then read it again, give people time to reflect and process. So that may not be everybody's learning style, but it's yeah. one that's often overlooked mm -hmm. when we're, we're doing presentations. So, so time is, ideas for space. Time is linked to space, obviously, and just yes. time for people to have a mature thought and reflect on it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's a lovely opportunity, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Rather than going back to that logical learners all the time, where we're giving them information, 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 people need that time to reflect on yeah. it. Now, take us to the H, to the heart. Yes. And we all need that. Not mm -hmm. all of, you know, a lot of us are those very logical, rational people. Heart's going to make us a little uncomfortable. But again, it's important to have that space. One thing, again, we do really well in church is music. And music has a very important place to have that heart connection. So music, I think we're doing pretty well on. Mm -hmm. um, but again, any other time there's a piece of music that might, might work well with the presentation, play that, because that's going to really have an impact on some people. Drama is another one. Anything we, again, that's going to capture people's attention. But for some people, that drama is also going to be, and it's something we don't use as much. And, yeah. you know, have people act something out or, or come up, here's an idea, work in a small group and come up with a skit to mm. illustrate that point. Yeah. So drama is another thing that really helps those heart learners. Another thing that I think we don't do enough of is having testimonies. And testimonies are another important part where you can actually share and have that heart learning. In fact, we went to a church where every Mother's Day, they would just open the floor up for people to share about how important their mothers had been to them. And people loved it and people would be in tears at the end of the service, um, even the most manly of men, um, because it was that time where it was that heart experience. Yeah, heart to heart. Heart in, to heart. in terms of sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. And one thing, and all of these things Jesus used. So, mm -hmm. of course, stories. You know, sometimes you come home for after you've heard a presentation. What have you remembered? The story. The story. Jesus used it. He was a master teacher. That's something we should be using as much as we can because we're going to remember things from the story. But something else Jesus used, and I'd like to finish with this one, Anthony, and that is humor. Really? He had a lot of humor. He's created us to love to laugh. Sure. So I'd like to finish with a joke. Tell and me. Again, okay. again, there's a million very appropriate jokes that you can use that will relate to your presentation. So there was a church picnic. So at the picnic, the pastor put out this beautiful bowl of red apples. He was concerned that they would be taken too quickly. So he put a little sign at the front which says, take only one, remember God is watching. So down at the other end of the table, a little boy read the sign, he came back, the end of the table was a lovely big plate of cookies, and in front he put a sign which said, take as many as you want, God is watching the apples. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it, you know, people are going to remember that, that joke if it's appropriate, if you link it to the subject matter that you're getting across, it's a very effective tool for teaching. Lisa, thank you. I'll never look at the word lavish again the same. <laughs> I'll be thinking of that. And uh, thank you so much for coming on Ministry in Motion. It's a pleasure. So what are the key points from the program? When teaching, when communicating, be lavish. Now, we found that that means be logical, use active methods, use visual methods, be interactive, use space. And of course, the heart is the place of learning as well. Thanks so much for joining us on Ministry in Motion.